Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on a mission to help 1 million people reduce risk in their lives. And I want to thank all my listeners from New Delhi for joining today. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts from A. Stotts Academy. And I'm here with featured guest Vivek Reina. Vivek, are you ready to join the mission? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying taking risks. And uh, I, I, I can assure you and your listeners that if you don't take risks, you're not going to reach anywhere. Yeah. Uh, for example, what, what I am trying to do over here, Andrew, is give internet access to unprivileged Indians. And, you know, in India, 70% uh, of people living in urban India uh, live in places which are not properly structured. Uh, live in places which don't have proper designs or proper plans. So structured, proper telecoms, telcos cannot bring internet there. They don't know how to pull wires in such areas because these are cluttered areas, no plans, no designs. And the big companies, they don't know how to do cabling in such areas because we're talking about bringing physical wire to each and every household. Yeah. And that's where I come in. This was my risk. I mm. think these people need to be connected to internet highway they need to be provided world-class broadband service and we need to unlock their potential to the economy. You see, these people don't have uh, same schools for the children as people in other areas. They don't have same clubs, they don't have same sports facilities, but guess what? Internet is same. Broadband is same. Once you connect them to internet, they are at par with the rest of the world and they can unleash their talent on the world. And today I'm happy to say because of this risk that I took, we have 1 million households connected in such areas with our internet service. And and yeah, they are unleashing themselves to the world, as they say. That's incredible. I mean, I'm on a mission to help a million people reduce risk in their lives, but you already have helped a million people. So well done. And that's the beauty of capitalism. Let me introduce you to the audience. Just for those that haven't met or heard of Vivek, He's a seasoned veteran with over two decades of experience in the broadband industry. As a CEO and co-founder of Excitel, he leads the mission to connect Bharat, propelling the company to the top three ISPs in India, a remarkable feat in just eight years. With a million subscribers spanning 55 cities, Vivek's leadership has revolutionized lives through pioneering unlimited internet broadband uh, Vivek, take a minute and tell us about the unique value that you are bringing to this wonderful world. Yeah. In, in your description of what I am doing, you use the word Bharat. And uh, your audience would not be knowing what that means, Bharat. Okay, Bharat is that unstructured India for us. You know, when you say India, it is the India that is visible, structured, done properly, planned, and executed. And whereas Bharat is something which nobody looks at. It is the back alley. Nobody looks at. It's the back alley, you know, everybody forgot about. It's the back alley, which is evolving on its own. Yeah. And yet, 70% of urban Indians live there. And uh, our mission, as I said in my introduction, is to connect these Indians uh, who have been left behind in this development uh, train to, to, to bring them on par with the rest of the world, to bring them on par with the rest of uh, the Indians and, and unleash the talent, as, as I said. Yeah. So, so how do how do we do that? We use local resources. We use local partnerships uh, from the community. We bring in a partner who invests in the network, local last mile network uh, in the area, and then maintains it for us. While as we do all the back end, we do all the technical stuff. We create packages. We bring fiber up to their premises, and and the last mile is done by this partner. You know, it's like an Uberized version of broadband. Uh, for example, in the Delhi city alone, we have 700 such partners investing in last mile cable in their area and maintaining last mile cable in their area for us. And yeah? how do you how do you compensate them? Uh, revenue share, clear right. revenue share. In, in, so they have the they have ongoing. So they have a, they have an incentive to keep that network running, to keep everything going. Exactly. Somebody's got a problem, get out there, fix it. Exactly. Now, it's easier said than done, Andrew. Mm -hmm. When we talk about 700 uh, partners with 700 different backgrounds, and I said, this is Bharat. These are uh, not really highly educated people, you know. So, so a lot of trainings, 
need to be done and not just training a lot of processes need to be created but hey we're humans we we like to violate processes uh, off and on then a lot of it has to be put in or a lot of systems and softwares have to be put in to bind these partners to the mothership of excitel and to create a flawless seamless experience for customers because you cannot have 700 types of experience in 700 places yeah across the city you need to have one uniform experience and that's the excitel experience we want to create for that a lot of it has gone into the system and 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 these partners are as i said bound to excitel through these it systems uh, for a customer it doesn't matter he customer buys stuff from excitel you know buys in excitel package uh, all the customer touch points are managed by excitel customer service payment everything is done by excitel while as this partner is the back end investing in the costliest part of the network 70% of all capex that goes into the business is in the last mile for which we have partner yeah mm. so 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 that's how we have done it you see right. we are a very small company we have invested um, let's say in total 20 million in this business till now the company is worth 200 million yeah uh, just different scale 200 20 million 1 million users yeah uh, it's it's unimaginable yeah. uh, in traditional sense and you're talking about bringing physical wire it's not it's not mobile Uh, just mind you, where you just put a tower and a whole area lights up. You bring the physical fiber to each and every household. Put a box, a router inside the homes, and yet 20 million. We have been able to do it because we leveraged uh, expertise of this person, this businessman who is embedded in the ecosystem of in urban India. It's not just urban India; actually, he's everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. This cable operator, these cable operators have been everywhere around the globe. Yeah. Is, is that different from way way it was done before and the way your competitors did it in the past they try to do it all themselves or did they work yeah. with partners you, you get it right uh, the, the competitors are usually big massive telcos and when i say massive these are uh, really massive guys we're talking about mukesh ambani uh, reliance yep. uh, you know reliance group yeah, yeah. Uh, third fourth richest mm-hmm. in the world yeah massive uh, so he has a arm which does uh telco business then there is airtel another massive group yeah but these guys you really focused on structured part of india uh because it's easy to do there because they were doing a- a- everything directly yeah for example airtel uh started wireline broadband business in delhi in 2004 and when we started in 2015 they covered just 25% of delhi they didn't go beyond it because why it was imag- unimaginable to go to such areas and provide broadband they say hey yeah how would we maintain the wire and is there really a market for uh, this thing in such areas yeah at in my past life i was working with such a telco and the first thing you wanted to do when you went to such areas is to see laptop penetration in an area mm-hmm. before you rolled out the network but hey it has changed you don't need a laptop to consume internet your mobile phone is enough and everybody in the city has a mobile phone it doesn't there's, there's no there's no human being without a mobile phone in any part of india now mm-hmm. yeah so 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 you consume content at it and also what has changed is what you do on internet you see a decade back or two decades back all you did was productivity enhancement on internet because the speeds were too low it's like 1 mbps what would you do on mbps you will mm-hmm. check your mail reply uh, some official work do some surfing on the web probably go to yahoo messenger or something and do some chatting but that's it there's no real value for masses uh, in it but now it's primary driver of entertainment in a household you know you watch your videos ott uh, youtube anything all entertainment is driven by wireline broadband and that's what has changed and you know what everybody needs entertainment whether they're rich poor middle class everybody wants to be entertainment uh, entertained after coming from a hard day of work yeah and therefore everybody is a buyer of wireless broadband and this has changed drastically which they didn't get initially yeah mm-hmm. uh, so 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 and we took uh, it on to sort of 14 when we started to when we started we said we are going to position it as a primary driver of entertainment we started with 20 mbps speed when delhi was at 1 mbps why because we wanted to drive content viewing uh, on internet mm. and in the first year itself we had 100000 users in the city It's amazing. I I remember back in 2012 when I was an analyst in the stock market, I was looking at companies and one was a broadband company in Thailand that had the uh that that was focusing on the upcountry area, the rural area, and they were just knocking it out of the park there and they were expanding 
fantastically well. And then they came to Bangkok and I asked the owner, you know, how did, how did you expand so quickly? He said, knock doors. He said, we just had our people out knocking on doors everywhere in every village, every place we could get. And then as soon as they came to Bangkok, I immediately used them and I've used them and they've been pretty flawless. And so I, I can, and I, you know, see the value, I feel the value. And like you said, once you get the strong broadband internet, there's all kinds of things that you can do, like exactly. this podcast. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And and um, going by that knocking doors, we have around two and a half thousand people knocking doors around the country right now and selling broadband. That's how we sell. Yeah, by knocking doors. Yeah, fantastic. Well, it's a great it's great to learn a little bit about what you're doing. And uh, now it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstances leading up to it, and then tell us your story. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, two, two, three years into working, I mean, after doing my MBA, I started working in a broadband company. My first job, somehow, I stumbled upon was a broadband company uh, called Hathaway. And uh, within two years, I understood it's stupid to work for somebody. It's totally stupid if you're smart. <laughs> so, so why? Why? Uh, you get penalized for stuff you don't, uh, you've not done. You know. For example, you're part of a team and the team makes a mistake. Somebody in the team makes a mistake. The whole team gets penalized. Your boss makes a mistake. You get penalized. The board makes wrong decisions. You still get penalized. You're not in control of your destiny and you don't know what you're doing. And then, obviously, you'll be always in this cycle of slow upgrades because you get a hike every year. Then you slowly upgrade to the next tier of motorcycle, then a small car, then a big car. You, you want to get over with it, this upgrade, mm -hmm. and do stuff that you want to do that you like to do, that you're passionate about doing, you know, and not, not the slow upgrades that a job gives you. And um, yeah, so within two years, I had decided that there's no way I'm going to uh, work for a these corporations um, and I'll do something on my own. Uh, but I'm talking about 2001 when I started working uh, and 2004, uh, I realized I need to change. Uh, but at that time, there was no ecosystem of angel investors. It didn't exist. Mm. Uh, I mean, Silicon Valley was just coming up in India. There was no such concept of startups. And obviously, they would just, you know, honor your experience. You should have been experienced, uh, 20 years experience, and then they would invest money on you or something, which was just stupid. But whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, Zepto, guys, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a company in India called Zepto, which was founded by two uh, dropouts, college dropouts. Uh, they're like 20 and 21 uh, now, 21 and 22 now. They're both worth 3 billion each. The company is worth 9 billion. <laughs> this this was never imaginable <laughs> in my time, in that time. Yeah. You didn't do that. Yeah. So so this hit me. I, I tried running around, uh, trying to show my ideas to people. Okay, they, some of them were ready, but they said, okay, fine. We'll give you some salary to work on or some incentives. I said, it's stupid. I'm leaving my job in a corporation for, for salary. So somehow it didn't work out. It took me 10 years, 10 years to convince somebody to invest money on me and to start this. Yeah. And again, these were not from India. These are Europeans. These mm. were from Bulgaria. I, I, and I met them in 2009, 10. Uh, and, and we met, we exchanged notes. And then um, they had already done this. They had already started a company in Bulgaria and sold it off to Deutsche Telekom. They were in India scouting for opportunities and Somehow we met because I was meeting everybody I could uh, while working with the corporation uh, till that time and wasting my time. So, and uh, that's how I met them. But again, after meeting them, it took me three years, three, four years to convince them to start some, uh, to start this company. And finally, we started in 2014 is when we decided mm -hmm. we're uh, going and first investment came. So, so, so I consider, uh, uh, you know, uh, these 10, 12 years that I spent in you know making this foundation as my worst investment as the end best investment also uh, it's worse because i could have done this 10 years back and i would have been a billionaire by now <laughs> and 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 the best also because had i not gone through, gone through that guy grind and learned what i have learned you know um, the life it teaches you uh, from these failures uh, that that who you are ultimately and then perhaps this also would have, would have not been possible yeah. Mm. So, 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 so this is my worst and my best mission at the same time. Um, the other thing that your uh, you know, listeners might like to understand is the fact that, you know, job, 
uh, working for somebody is fragile. You know what's fragile? Fragile is something that breaks when you put, put stress on it. Yeah, it's simple, fragile. Yeah, uh, they'll say no. A bigger corporations are not so fragile. Uh, if you work for a big corporation or the government, it's not so fragile. Uh, fine, understood, uh, given. It becomes robust. It becomes more robust. Hmm. But robust is not opposed to fragile. Yeah, something when you put stress on it, it breaks. That's fragile. Then there should be a word for something when you put stress on it and it improves. Yeah, and that's anti-fragile. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not coining the term. Nicholas Taleb is already coining this term. Yep. Uh, for example, your your muscles. You put stress on them. What happens? The muscles grow. They mm-hmm. don't break. They they grow. Yeah. Human body. Human beings are biologically anti-fragile. When a child is born, you put uh, vaccines. What are vaccines? Vaccines are infections. Small doses of infection. Um, body reacts and you develop immunity. Yeah, yeah. Human beings by design are anti-fragile. They react to environment through stressors. Therefore, this 12 years of stress on my body probably improved me to such an extent that I can now do what I am doing. Yeah. Uh, entrepreneurship by design is anti-fragile. Every mm. failure teaches you something. Every failure, by every failure, you learn something and you become a better version of yourself. Yeah. In, in a job, if you fail, you go down. You're dead. Uh, in, a, in entrepreneurship, every failure teaches you something, makes you stronger, makes you better uh, in doing what you're doing. So mm. therefore, uh, if you are still working for somebody, uh, take take my word for it. It's not worth it. Leave it. <laughs> Do something you're passionate about. Nobody can beat you at what you're good at. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Vivek, I was just, you made me think of a conversation I had with my mother this morning. She lives with me here in Bangkok. She's 85 years old. And um she was pretty tough when I was young and she made me, you know, suffer the consequences of my bad exactly. behavior. And I was telling my story to someone in front of her and she listened to it. And then this morning she said to me, may I feel bad that maybe I was too tough on you. And I said, there's two things that you need to think about in this case, mom. The first one is uh, you did the best that you could with what you knew at the time. That's number one. Number two is, look at me now. I'm stronger because you were tougher. And it made me think about the anti-fragile thing that you're talking about, which I think, uh, and it also made me think that, you know, one of the challenges when you're young and you're going through this, you know, excitement is that it's hard to, it's hard to get that momentum. It's hard to find the right people to invest. It's hard to articulate the idea. It's hard to see the idea sometimes. So when we look back, we say, I, I wish I could have figured it out faster. But that's where I'm kind of curious, like what would be your advice or your idea for a young person that was in, in your, that's currently in your situation, they have energy, they have excitement, they want to get out. But you know, how do, how do, what advice would you give them to make sure that they don't have to suffer for 10 years or so in the wilderness. Yep. So, so one, uh, they're luckier than me because uh, there is ecosystem already out there. We know, world knows what startups are. Uh, there is a whole network of startups and uh, investors, angel investors, series A investors, series B investors. The whole ecosystem is ready. So first and foremost, they want to be where startups are. They want to be in places where their this ecosystem exists. If they are at the wrong place, it's the first thing. If they are living in a village still, it's not going to happen there. Yeah, Believe me, it's not going to happen there. They're going to waste their time there. So they need to be where, uh, where the action is. That's the first thing. Mm. Second, the most important thing is to decide what you want to do. That's very important for everything in life. It's important for who you want to be, who's going to be your life partner, who's going to be your business partner, choosing what you want to do, choosing who you want to be should be taken more seriously and you should spend most time there. Why? Because this is like once in a lifetime shot. If you got to get it wrong, you lose many, many, many years in it. Yeah. So, so choose, choose very carefully and you want to choose stuff what you're good at naturally. Why? Because nobody can beat Andrew at, doing this podcast. Mm. There's nobody like him. He's a unique person. Yeah. So, so you cannot change in challenge Andrew in being Andrew. So that, that's not possible. So you want to be doing what you're naturally good at, because if you're doing something which can be taught in a university, they'll produce hundreds and thousands more like you and you'll be beaten in that game. 
Yeah, it's no use doing that stuff. Do what you're naturally good at, because if somebody tries to compete with you, they'll be working. You'll be enjoying. Uh, yeah, because that's mm. what you do. Uh, yeah, that's who you are. So that that's very important. Choose what you like doing, and and the other thing is failures. Again, what you were saying, Andrew. Mm. Initially, there will be failures. There will be naysayers. People more often than not will will put you down. They'll say, "Ah, this is not doable. Come on, this is." This. I mean, I, I just don't listen. Listen to your own inner self. If you're good at it. you see a problem that you can solve you have a solution for the problem and the problem can be made with the business model go for it go for it steal back borrow steal and start a use case once you have a pilot then there will be people out there there are millions hundreds or hundreds of people out there who can fund it if it's a viable thing so so yeah two three advices as i said first be where the action is don't waste your time uh, in places where there's no action second do what you're naturally good at doing what you enjoy doing and and third create a test case mm-hmm. be aware of naysayers yeah yeah the adv- such advisors you know, for example when henry ford uh, started his automobile company somebody people uh, asked him did you take advice from the people from the consumers he said yeah the uh, advice i was taking when i went to people what do you want for transportation and i asked this question they said faster horses yeah and and i if i had been i was looking around and taking advices i would still be you know riding the horse will be no cars yeah. yeah so 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 if you are passionate about something and you know you are you are you are there you have an idea go for it don't yeah. wait fantastic advice um i was just talking with a young um guy who's graduating from university in the us coming back to thailand and um he was asking me some advice on things and i just said you 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 got to be careful asking me cuz i don't listen to people and i don't listen and i don't follow the rules i believe that i can cuz he asked me why did you go to thailand in 1992 and 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 why did you stay and i said you know i found a job as a financial analyst in the stock market in thailand and every day i went home i was so happy about what i was doing i was also teaching and i set up my own business with my best friend i had so much going on that i was so happy and i thought why would i change anything if i'm doing everything i said i had one rule in my life and that was all i all i asked for is to have a happy day every day oh well, yeah and so i want to ask you now for someone that that's in, empowered and excited about what you've shared what's a resource or you know a method or anything that you can help provide them a book or any type of resource to help them do these things to become you know successful yeah i okay it depends on uh, who i'm talking to if if, if it's it's somebody who is who's interested uh, in startups and wants to be successful in business there are certain foundational texts that they should be uh, reading uh Nicholas Taleb uh, is one uh, author they need to read mm-hmm. they need to read for sure you know there's this whole incognito series uh, it starts with um, fooled by randomness there's one book called fooled by randomness one is anti fragile the other yeah. one is uh, black swan yeah there are there are book of prophecies there are four five books uh, if you not read them uh, drop everything else from your list and read this guy read these books this year this is enough for you to start with that's one thing it will change your perspective completely yeah. completely this mind you for business at least uh, secondly if you you need to be cognizant of your own biases how your own mind plays with you and gentleman um, was my favorite and he died unfortunately two three days back i mean last week i think uh, and i'm talking about danny kanyman uh, and uh, his thinking fast think slow you need to uh, read mm. and at the same time uh, there's gentleman in silicon valley and he is called naval ravikant and uh, you need to i mean he's not written a book there's a book called uh, almanac of naval ravikant uh, go and read that mm-hmm. uh, and once you have read all three people uh, you will be a much changed person and you'll be a much better person not just in business as a human being also you will have you would have improved a lot mm-hmm. i would say start with that and rest to follow ladies and gentlemen there's your homework we've got uh talib and that's uh fool by randomness that's uh uh black swan and that's anti fragile we got dan daniel kanaman 
and that is thinking fast and slow. And then uh, the final one is the almanac of uh, what? What is his name again? I forgot. Nav Naval Ravi Khan. Nav Naval Ravi Khan. Yes, that's the only one I haven't read. So I think I got some homework from you. But that's a great list. I'll have a link to all those in the show notes. Um, last question for you: What? I, this is this is my my most interesting question for you because you're so full of energy and uh, passion for what you do. Uh, what's your number one goal for the next twelve months? Um, we have to double the user base. Uh, it, it may not happen in 12 months, but, but 12 months is OKR, the B hack goal that we have taken internally. Uh, let's hope we're able to do it. I can't wait to hear from you in a year from now, and we'll celebrate. If you're not doubled, yeah. you'll be close, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listeners, there you have it. Another story of loss to keep you winning. Remember, I'm on a mission to help 1 million people reduce risk in their lives, and we just got some tips today. As we conclude, Vivek, I want to thank you again for joining our mission. And on behalf of ASTOTS Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. Do you have any parting words for the audience? Uh, uh, my words would be uh, focus on your goal, look at the leverage inherent in the ecosystem, and uh, make your mark in the world. Boom. That's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our well fellow risk takers. Let's celebrate that today. We added one more person to our mission to help 1 million people reduce risk in their lives. This is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on The Upside.